This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish, welcome to the show. Up on this episode we're doing a brand new review of a horror movie that got released a couple of months ago via Blumhouse. This one is Imaginary. Now this one is now available on demand, um, in the States at least. Uh, I do think it is available in the UK, although I did use a VPN so... I can be no judge of what's available in the UK. Let's see it is, and if it isn't, it will be soon. So yeah, Blumhouse, the studio behind this one. Blumhouse, the the, the, the house of horror that, I'm going to be honest, could use a, like a new coat of paint. Um, they've, been, they've been swinging and missing for a wee while now. They're not having a great year. I think uh, Imaginary probably did okay, but I think they are in the hole for several several hundreds of millions uh, because that Exorcist movie bombed and rightly so. Uh, so yeah, Imaginary is a movie that we're covering on this one because it's still a relatively new title. There's a chance that maybe you are stumbling across this review but have not checked out the movie. So this will be non-spoiler where I can. However, use your better judgement. If you do not want to know anything about the movie even at all um, and you are going to watch it, then hit stop or skip ahead to the end, or do whatever it is you do, but go away, check the movie, and then come back and check out this review. If you're sticking around beyond that warning, then this one's on you. Don't say you weren't warned. So yeah, we're going to talk about Imaginary, the movie about imaginary friends that might not be imaginary. Does that sound... Sounds like an interesting setup, Or does it? Here is a teaser promo trailer for the movie and when we return we're discussing it right after this home sweet home i just want this to be good for the girls i left you all alone down here i like your new friend alice chauncey says you're not allowed to play with us because you left him every culture has entities that tether to the young we call them imaginary friends and they're angry that you left Rated PG-13, only in theatres March 8th. And welcome back. So, uh, Imaginary, directed by Jeff Wadlow, who's done a couple of movies now for um, Blumhouse. He did that Truth or Dare movie and that Fantasy Island movie. Both movies I did not like. So he is continuing a trend here of movies that I just... They're just maybe just not made for me. Maybe I, I probably, as a 42-year-old man, a lifelong horror fan, and probably not the demographic for the movie Imaginary. But let's give you some details on the movie. This one is directed by Jeff Wadlow. It is co-written by Jeff Wadlow, Greg Erb, and Jason Orenland. Uh, the movie itself stars the following cast. Dewanda Wise, Tegan Burns, Piper Buron. Uh, we've got Betty Buckley, Tom Payne, Veronica Falcon, Samuel Salary, Matthew Sato. We have Alex Alexia. Um... I'm sure that's not how you pronounce her name. Um, and Rhythm Hard and some other folks in here. Synopsis for this movie is listed on the IMDb's. A woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and unhappy. And uh, that she has abandoned him. So this movie, to be honest with you, the trailer didn't look great to begin with. So I'm not going to say that I went in with the sunniest of dispositions and I didn't go in with a spring in my step and was like, you know what's ready to rock my world. But I was suitably prepared for something to to grab me. I like I like stories from the kids level in horror. I think that's quite especially when you you take what as an adult is a very strange concept. The concept of an imaginary friend as an adult is fucking disturbing. But as a kid it's like, oh overactive imagination and an adult, it's lock up in the, you know, funny farm uh, with the, the, the old giggle factory with the, 
the white jacket, but in a kid it's like, oh, they're so whimsical. World building is what they're doing. And I'd, so I love, as an adult, viewing things through that lens. You go, you check, how interesting would it be to add that small level of menace? So, like, as a concept, I'm not against it, even though the trailer looked big and dumb. Um, I think where the, the movie kind of falls pretty much from the off is that the movie itself struggles with what it actually wants to be. This is a common theme through a lot of horror movies I've seen this year and it tends to be the ones that steer away from trying to appease all audiences and actually focus in on what's trying to do narratively um, and the storytelling that actually worked for me. A movie that I saw this year, The Coffee Table for example, it's a movie that has a very distinct view on how unpleasant it actually wants to be and as a result of that it never feels like it's capitulating or compromising with the audience so that kind of works for me even if I uh, if I didn't like it I would appreciate I did like it but even if I didn't like it I would appreciate the craft imaginary kind of feels like it once again is made for a very younger teen market but as we've seen with movies like Five Night at Freddy's unless you actually bite in with that with something like, I watched horror movies when I was a young'un, um, and the ones I watched, I probably shouldn't have watched, and they were all gory and violent and all the rest. And kids today are tougher than I was then, so I think kids can probably watch something a little bit more dangerous than this. Uh, the movie kind of mollycoddles people in a way which just is not satisfying. The acting in the story is at times pretty dumb. Um, the, the concept, the world building that they do to try and articulate what the the imaginary people are where they come from and the, the the space beyond is quite interesting but it falls very quickly into cliche that any spark of originality becomes a almost a signpost to oh yeah that horror movie did that or you're you end up recalling god knows how many other better horror movies there's one that is like much too long as well it clocks in at an hour and three quarters this could have easily been an hour and twenty um there's too much family shit going on here and there's also this kind of drive to introduce a subplot with um, an ex-wife and, you know, uh, the, the custodial attitude towards this child um, that I feel like is a distraction. I don't know who it's to serve either because the audience is fully aware there's something creepy going on. So it's not as if you're trying to, you know, switch... The, the, the narrative and be like, oh, well, maybe it isn't something supernatural, maybe it is just this parent. It's clearly something otherworldly right from the beginning. So I'm kind of confused as to the choice in that as well. It's not nearly as scary as it should be. It's not nearly as violent as it should be. The effects, the digital effects, are going to age horribly in a couple of years. There's no getting around that. And the pacing just feels... Off. Too many lulls, too many bits where we lean too much into not satisfying storytelling instead of going, like I would love, like you watch a movie like Little Monsters, which I know is like what, 40 years old or something now, 30, 30, 35 or something, um, that movie, like see when you finally get to the other place with all the monsters, it feels rich, vibrant in a world that's been lived in, this one felt sterile and, and computer great game-esque, um, didn't like the sim track, uh, like I, I will usually fall back on it, but the sim track's at least interesting to listen to. Sim track in this movie is not interesting to listen to at all. Actually, it like it, it undone some of the scenes for me by how it kind of almost worked against what you were seeing on the screen. So I'd like to try and pick up a positive. The positive that I'm going to give this one is actually similar to the positive that I gave a recent movie called Taro. Um, the review should be on the YouTube station by now. Um, my 10 year old watched Taro and enjoyed it, but said it reminded her a lot of like a kind of slightly longer, darker Goosebumps episode. This kind of reminds me of a slightly longer, darker Goosebumps episode. Um, she watched it, she quite enjoyed it. She didn't love it, she didn't love it as much as she loved Taro, but she got on with it a lot better. And I'm looking at her going, maybe that's the market. Maybe. Maybe nowadays our 10 year olds are more sophisticated than maybe the studios think they are and as a result they can sit through stuff like this comfortably and to them this is the equivalent of what it was like when I was like 8 years old watching Maniac Cop. Maybe that's the, maybe these are the movies that are, are good entry points to them. Mostly because as a 10 year old I don't think they fully understand the cliche, the tropes, the 
derivative right in, um, and as a result, they can sink a little bit more into it. I don't know how well this one did. I know they rushed it onto video on demand, which is never a great sign. I know uh, critically it took a bit of a pound in, and I would probably say rightly so. Uh, I don't know what the audience score was because I didn't check it out on Rotten Tomatoes, but if it's low, I would probably agree with that as well. Um, I'm going to give this movie a 2 out of 5. I didn't like it. Didn't hate it. It's like competently put together. Um, so it's difficult to, to say you hate a movie. Uh, unless it's really fucking bad. And this one isn't really fucking bad, it's just very fucking plain. Um, and there's better time, better ways to spend an hour and 45 minutes. Let's put it that way. So do that instead. Go and visit a friend. Take out your neighbour's rubbish. Um, bake a cake. Phone a parent that chats too long. Anything except watch Imaginary. How about that? So there you go. Two out of five for Imaginary. That is the new movie from Blumhouse. Now, if you're on the YouTubes, hit a like and a subscribe to this video. Smack the bell and that way you always get a wee notification when new episodes drop. But more importantly, interact um, in the comment section below. Let me know what you made of Imaginary. Am I way off the mark? Have I become a curmudgeon? Am I old and set in my ways and unable to see the joy in light in modern horror movies? It might be the case. I might have turned into the very thing that I hate. But I don't like this one. If you liked it, let me know. Um, and if you didn't like it, sound off and tell me what it was about the movie that you didn't like. If you're checking us out on Spotify or Anchor, on the apps there that allow you to do video and podcast, then subscribe there and answer the question, which is very similar to the question that I just asked there. That question pops up at the end of the episode. And then lastly, if you're checking out the audio version of this on any of the podcatchers available out there on the World Wide Web and on our devices, then make sure you subscribe to the RSS feed. It gives you access to the over 1,300 episodes of the podcast under the stairs. But more importantly, ladies and gents, uh, all the future episodes that might drop your way. Lastly, once again, thank you for checking out this review. The podcast under the stairs will return to you real soon. But until then, wherever you are, whatever the time zone is, and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. This is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs, and I am signing off.